What's happening, people? It's Bone McLeod Friday. I'd like to welcome y'all to the show. This is the Ecamm Live demo. I am the community manager, Doc Rock. The people in the chat are the Ecamm fam. If you're brand new around these here parts, please make sure you let the fam know by saying, hey, new. What they will do is welcome you into the party so you don't feel like you're out here by yourself because that's not how the Ecamm fam rolls. What we're going to talk about today is the ins and outs of Ecamm Live. I will walk you through how to set up scenes, how to use overlays, how to use the audio panels, you know, set your scenes up, you know, the whole nine yards, just the basics, just the basics, just the facts, man, just the facts. Now, in the process of doing such a thing, uh, you might have some questions. So if you do, you're going to post your question to the chat. Now, we only ask one thing. And Paul has probably already asked it because that's Paul, Mr. Moderator Supreme. This is what he does. It is very important that you do all of us a favor and formulate the question as follows. Q colon and whatever your question is. Q colon, who's buried in Grant's tomb? Uh, Ulysses S. Grant. I don't know. Somebody else was in there. It'd be weird. Yes, that's how you do the question. The reason why will be self-apparent at a later point in said demonstration, but... Please follow that. It just makes life easier. I don't want to miss your questions. Now, if you happen to catch this on the replay or any one of the other, uh, let's see, this is 28 of these demos, uh, still leave your question in there because if you leave your question there, somebody will come back and answer it for you. Or you can just send us a message at supportdesk at ecamm.com or marketing at ecamm.com. One of those two will get you squared away, and then you're all set. Okay, let's dive in. Let's do some things. First, let me say what's up to me familia. Mr. Rich Graham is up in Chia. What's up, Mr. Rich? We got you there. We got Mr. Parker. Hello, Mr. Parker. Good to see you here. <laughs> Aubrey says she's third. She made, no, nah, dude, no, nah, man. You done lost. Aubrey beat you to it. Happy Friday it is. What's happening, PJ? Welcome to the party. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, those questions are not for myself. What's up, G? Good to see you here. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there's a tra I didn't even see the trailer, but knowing, uh, <laughs> knowing Caleb, he's always on it. Boom, boom, boom. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, Miss Gretchen is here. Gee, that is not a question, but I don't I'm just curious as to what is the outcome because it's kind of funny because normally you just press, you know, your credentials and it's gravy. But you know, it could be routers or any kind of weird stuff going on. I see Love Outreach has done some avatar fixing. That looks pretty dope. I like it. What's up, Glenda, aka GK in the building? Thank you, Paul. That is how a question should look. Mr. Todd, it's almost the season. Just let me get past my gravy. I don't eat turkey, causes gout. <laughs> but let me I like I like gravy and stuffing though. Like it's a champion. I used to like turkey, but you know it's really weird. It's like if it's done right, turkey's amazing. Most people, 90% of the turkeys out there is dry than a mug. What's happening, Dragon? Good to see you here. Kevin Cox in the building. And let's see, just check and make sure we all there. There is Canadian Whistle Lady, a.k.a. Keely. What's happening, Ron? Good to see you here. Up, oh, Hup, Holland, Hup. Yes, that's my favorite international football team. I have been a long-time fan of L'Orange. So welcome here, sir. Um, I think you might have to go all the way back to the days of Johan Cruyff. Is when I first started. And, of course, being a Manchester fan, we tend to always have at least one of them on our squad. And, of course, Rue Van Nistelrooy, Robin Van Persie, I mean, Memphis Depay, you know, Edwin Van der Sar. The list goes on. We've been very fond of LaRange. So that explains my love. Plus, orange is my favorite color, believe it or not. Mr. David, good to see you here. And I think that covers everybody. 
And oh no, no, Woody is in the building. Woody is here. Good to see you here. All right, let's see. We're almost ready. <laughs> Does a moderator supreme come with sour cream and tomatoes? <laughs> oh, Kevin, that is legit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's legit. What's up, Mr. Melvin? Good to see you here, buddy. I appreciate you. Hey, Brian, good to see you here, man. Boom. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know what's funny? I find stuff new from doing the demo every week. That part is kind of crazy. So, yes, that's funny. Um, that explains becoming a lawn specialist. You get all you can eat grass. <laughs> Don't hit me, PJ. I got jokes. <laughs> gravy was invented for turkey oh that is amazing amazing and hey what's up chocolate twix yoga what's up Kali? what's up stevie oh man me and stevie going to fight this weekend manchester united manchester city game is upon us so that happens and bmk is here okay let's get started gang i'm gonna hit command shift d I say this every week. I'm going to keep saying it. One of my favorite features of Ecamm is live demo mode because it makes it easy for you to be able to show people what you're doing whenever you need help or whenever you want to teach someone else how to do it. That's what we do in the community. We all teach each other how to do things. And then so there. Actually, before I dive super mad deep into this demo, I need to do a Shane Millis plug. Hold on. Let's see, where did I do with them graphic file? Emma, what you do with the graphic file? See, I just cleaned a bunch of stuff off my desk, and sometimes I clean too much stuff off my desk and actually make it harder for me to see what I'm <laughs> looking for. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come back out of here. Guys, uh, this is happening. So we've been doing these. And these are fun. Basically, it's a co-working session. You come in, you kick it with us. We basically just put our heads down and we work, but we work for a solid hour. And this is designed for my procrastination posse who'd love to act like they don't have the time to get things done. So when we do the Ecamm Fam Jams, we are having you come in. We basically just do work. Like we don't do anything. We just do work. And you'll be, it's a solid hour. You can stay longer if you wish, but it's a solid hour to actually focus on your tasks, focus on your skills, practice whatever you need to practice, whatever. Okay. We don't do a lot of chit chatting. There's a couple jokes here and there, but there's not a lot of, you know, water cooler talk or chit chatting or anything like that. And yeah, it's not, you know, tech support hour, but we basically come in and do work for like an hour. And we've had two so far and they have been absolutely amazing uh keely big ups to you keely held court yesterday um with alec and paul then for two hours and 45 minutes of focused work like people were getting their projects done so the next one will be monday and it's uh 1 p.m my time but the calendar switches on monday so i can't do that conversion in my head for you but uh, let me check real quick if I can find something or we'll do a time and date um, so that you guys can come in. But let me check. The calendar does switch on Monday. So 1 p.m. My time is 6 p.m. to the East Coast. OK, and then there'll be Tuesday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. to the East Coast. OK, so. I'll let um, Paul or Alec or one of them fix it correctly. So Monday, 6 p.m. East Coast, Tuesday, Wednesday at 7 p.m. East Coast. It will be the next couple fam jams. And I highly, highly, highly uh, put upon you that you should show up. Because some of y'all always be with the excuse. I still haven't learned this because I haven't had the time. No, you didn't make the time. Let's just be honest. You didn't make the time. So now I'm making the time for you. All you got to do is show up and listen to the lovely music as I DJ. And just, it's great. It's fantastic. And it's, you know what? I feel like I'm not working by myself. I'm working, you know, with like 12 other people in the room. And it's fine. Um, yep. Yeah, Paul, you can kind of fix it. 
<laughs> it's cool. I love you, P. You're you're good in my book, fam. Somebody will get the time straight. We are going to try to send it in the email coming up this week. I'm working with Katie to get it sent out to you guys so you know. We don't have a set schedule yet because I'm hosting them. Some of the other moderators are hosting them. But um, we would like to get it to where there's a somewhat of a schedule. So we're trying to make a calendar that you guys can subscribe to to make it easier for you to know when these events are happening. But... It's just, just whatever. Okay. Um, anyway, that's, is what it is. This window doesn't have controls, Glenda, so you don't get to do anything to it. It is what it is. If you notice, it doesn't have controls because it's not important for most people. You just got to look at it the way it is. That one doesn't have any controls. All right, let's go. Let's dive in. So, Looking at this overall thing, now remember, when you set your Ecamm up, yours may not look exactly like mine. I have mine in my very particular doc style. I just like it like that. That's the song. Um, but basically, we have the scene window, and then we have our overlay window. Hey, stop that. Then we have sound effects. We have sound levels. We have comments and reaction. Your comments and reaction window might not look like mine. Yours might look more like this. I can't see, so I am bigging it so that I can see. So simple. Over here, we have bandwidth statistics window you won't see. It doesn't normally exist for most people. I put it there because I like to pay attention to what's going on in the internet, but don't get it twisted. It's not that important. I put my program window up there some days. It's just I like to have it open. Okay. This is my camera effects window. This is my interview window. And down here is when you are live with an interview, you uh, person, you can chat back and forth with the people that are your guests on the show. I don't need that today, so I can close that. But if you ever need it, you click the little box down there and then booyaka shot. It works. Okay. Now. <laughs> that's correctly that is correct i like it like that um there we go so the way i like to break this down is i like to remind ken folks that scenes to me are very much like a play yeah, that's the best way to put it. It's very much like a play. So when you are doing a play or you're creating a movie, you're going to break everything up into act one, act two, act three, act four. If you're building your show, you kind of want to do the thing, right? So how do we explain this? You guys saw my first scene. My first scene was my music. A lot of mercy, right? The second scene is me, blank screen, just talking to you guys. On the third one down here, now again, I'm just using these for demos, but this is where I come in, I'm playing around. So I'm giving you a screen share. I'm allowing you to see some of the things that say over here in Chrome. And then I got my little... Uh, Picture in picture, which is actually a camera overlay. You can tell by the shape. Uh, you'll see in a second that I can do things like apply a swanky border, cool corner radii, things like that. We'll talk more about that when we get to the overlay window. So I'm going to move this up because Kevin always reminds me that when you're watching this on YouTube, that YouTube puts like the logo or some other stuff in the way where that goes. Right, right now, I'm in demo mode, so you don't really see it, but you got to be cognizant of where you put things on the screen, right? If I wanted to make it so that you guys can see the chat, I might move this over here, you know, things like that, okay? So that is just how we would do it, right? I have my ending, which is a live movie or something like that. There's many things you can do. We'll get into, as we talk about overlays, you'll see how I build these, but just think of your scenes as a way to play right now a couple of dope things about scenes and this is something that uh poppy Kulo, luis and i were demonstrating the other day 
I'm going to press a button on my stream deck and I'm going to start a set of scenes that has a ticker and the ticker will change automatically as I am talking. Now I have this timer up here just so that you can see that it happens. But basically what you'll notice, and if you're paying attention over here and live demo world, right? When you come over here, you'll see that these scenes will automatically change. Okay. So as we get into live demo mode, you'll see these scenes automatically change when the timer gets down to zero, which is probably coming very soon. So I won't move just yet. I'll give it a chance to jump down by itself and uh, hurry up now. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, just because I said that it's taking longer than normal, but let me see. Let me, oh, it's only 10 seconds left. Okay, we'll come back in. All right, so you'll see automatically at the end of 10 seconds, it will jump down to the next scene because I have them set to, there you go. I have them set to move basically every minute. Now, this is a way when people are doing a live talking head, you know you're going to be deep in conversation about a subject matter. You're not going to be able to change them automatically. It will move for you, okay? So I'll show you how I set that up in just a second. I come over here, I click on this pencil in my overlays, and I have a box down here that says go to next scene when finished, and then I have the auto start to start the timer. Now, what we normally do is make them disappear at a different date, and I'll show you how to make them invisible as we get into the overlay section, but realize that as long as I don't touch anything, these scenes will play in order in sequence and switch every minute on the fly without me doing anything. Hands are completely over here and then boom off to the next one. Okay. So that's something you can do. Put a bunch of scenes in a folder and they will run on loop until you click out of said folder. Okay. So let's get into how I built some of these things before I dive in. Let me take a look at you folks and see if we have any actual questions, not whatever it is that GB posting. So far, so good. We got a bunch of goofball comments. There is one question. Dragon says, can you tell which icons apps are in your menu bar at the top? Yeah, I can tell. You want me to tell you what mines are? But uh, they're probably irrelevant to streaming, but I can tell you. <laughs> they're, um, yeah, there's just a bunch of random issue stuff up there. I don't. There's nothing up there that's going to help you do what I'm doing right now. So... <laughs> Uh, uh, let me come back in, go to demo mode. All right. So let's take a look. This is a blank scene. I like to start with a blank scene, command shift B. It comes like this on a normal circumstance. Bleh, um, normal circumstances, it comes up blank like such. I have dropped in a background image. Okay. In my overlay section, showing background, I dragged in this background PNG, right? To give you a better look, I can put on a different PNG, right? So any graphic I stick back there becomes my background. I'm going to use this orange one for a second here. Now, this is going to be talking about the overlay window now, so let's just talk about it. First of all, it's a little disconcerting to have me doing this demo and you guys can't see nothing, so... Ana gets mad, so I'll stick a camera. This icon down here is camera. Image, animation, screen share, text, timer, widget, camera, folder, trash can. They're kind of self-explanatory, yet people always ask what they are. I'm confused. Okay, so we're going to press this. I'm going to make my camera a circle. Dope. Okay, so I'm going to put my camera over here just so we can see, and then I can embiggen it any size I want, right? So let's embiggen it about your big. Then we're going to hit this pencil and then take off the border. 
add the border, take it off, add the border, take it off. So it doesn't matter, right? Run for the border, Taco Bell. Quarter radiuses doesn't really matter for circles, so we can ignore that. If I go to Squircle, now corner radius matters, right? Square, circle, Squircle. And then borders, same thing, right? I can do tall and then use these. Let me help you. Notice, notice the bottom edge down here, okay? It's a hard edge, soft edge, soft edge, right? More round, less round, more round, less round. So you can make it cool. I like to do this. I have no idea why. It's just a dock thing. It's kind of sort of no biggie, but that's just me. That's how I roll, okay? So let me go back to A to 6 that. Um, come down. All right, got your kills. Pulled into the parking lot. <laughs> Oh, that is funny. That is funny. Thanks, Gretchen. So, ooh, uh, guys, be careful of Logitech mice and the hyperactive scroll. I do that every week without fail because um, the wheel the wheel scrolls infinitely until you stop it. I love it. I hate it. <laughs> so now I would decide, do I want to add something to this particular list? Let's say I wanted to talk about the uh, fam jam, right? So I could press this image button, get a dialog box, and then click on my desktop, and then click on my image, and then say open. And then use the scroll wheel to unembiggen said image, and then line them up accordingly, and then gangster. So now I have an image. I don't know about you folks, I never pressed that button. And the reason why I never pressed that button is because it turns out that if you have a bunch of uh, drives and like network drives and RAID and stuff like that, for me, it takes a little bit of time for those to open. So what I do, notice image on the desktop here. And you notice, um, sorry, I'm the weirdo. I don't have any icons on my desk. Just not how I roll. I like it plain. But what I did here is I move this into view so that all you can see, pick it up, drag it into the interface, turn it loose, then scrolly scroll. So that works with everything. You can drag and drop images. You can drag and drop emanations. You can drag and drop round about anything. All right. So let me show you again what I mean. Let me drag an animation. Here's an animation on the desktop. I'm going to drag the animation in. And then there it is. Ooh, you could do it super cool. You could do it. it has two scenes. I'll show you this in a second. So I got them lined up straight. All right, cool. So simple, right? Now let's say we want to make this dope. So we duplicate the scene, and then we uh, turn off the back one. So now I can come in here to delete the first one. So now when I change the scene, it just looks. Boom, everything is in the right spot. Uh, not that gangster? So that's something that you can do. You can get fancy with it. All right, now moving straight along, let me delete this. Let's say I wanted to talk about an application that I have on my computer. All right, so let me go. Let me go over here and boom, I'm going to open up the old maps. Real quick, I'm going to leave this open, and then I'm going to say where I want to go. Where I want to go. Let's go to over here. All right, there we go. So I'm going to click on this icon here. This is screen share overlay. Okay, so I'm going to, boom, press that. Same thing pops up. Line them up how I do. Pull them over here. Anna, I saw you sneak in. 
Um, you know what would be dope? If you guys, one of you guys would send me the grid real quick so I don't have to go hunt it. I would appreciate that. Um, let me change this to my app. I'm going to say maps, and then I'm going to pick where my map is. Okay, so let's do some things with this here. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, green screen key. That cuts out the background, right? If you want to do that. It basically just chops off the background. The other option is you can hold down this option key and just crop that sucker in to the edge of the interface. And then you can crop that in to the edge of the interface. And then you can crop the bottom. And then so you can do it like that. Right? So maybe I'm trying to give a conversation about this location here in Japan. And then as I do things here and move around, I can kind of show you various parts. Ooh, I might have backed out super far. Okay. I can come all the way out and you can see that we are here in Japan, right? But I can zoom in and I'm able to talk about things, right? I can show somebody, you know, various places you want to go. This is on my list of places to go. So I actually already have it there. So you can do a screen share overlay like such. Um, very awesome. Okay. The next thing we want to do is throw up a text box. So this text box comes up and I'm going to go, I'm going to go how to type is what I'm going to do. Then I might want to be on brand here. So I'll click on this background color and then use my little sticky widget over here. Pick that. And then I'm going to take my border and I'm going to click on this. Click on my little sticky widget and pick that. And then boom. I can embiggen it. I can leave that there. Press on the little pencil. Say fly in from the bottom. Gangster, gangster. And then now, if I'm in this scene and I go to this scene, it just flies right in. You see? So you can build relatively complex oriented things you know what i mean um you grab the application by clicking the pencil and click on here and these are all the apps that are running and i went maps right i could also go uh finder right i can do pull tube which is another application that I was using today, I can go Ecamm Live and I can put the comments in there. Like it's you select the app by selecting the app. <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff is so simple that you guys just make it hard because you think things are hard when they're not. But I mean, it is so simple that it's simple. You know what I mean? Like they kind of built it that way. Right. So you can make it anything you want. And in each app, if the app has a multiple windows like this, the picker will let you pick what window it is in that app that needs to be seen. So I can put the sound effects window in there if I wish, right? It's going to pick whatever, you know, you tell it to. So any app that has multiple windows, it will pick in between those multiple windows. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's that simple. Okay, let's get rid of that. All right, that covers screen share overlays and text is a lot. We'll cover text a little bit deeper. Uh, timers, let's click that. I'll just throw a timer here, 86 to border. I have auto start, not auto start. I have go to the next scene when it's finished, which we talked about. You can adjust the times here. You can do your alignment, left, right, center, such and such. Now you can do countdown to a particular date and time. And because Todd's here, we're going to do this date and time. So we got 49 days, right? Until St. Nick Klaus comes through. 
So now we're going to click on the text box. We're going to click on the emoji. And then we're going to go to the top. And we're going to say Santa. And then we're going to turn off the border. I mean background. Boom. And then we're going to embiggen. Damn it. Who told you to move? We're going to embiggen Santa. We're just going to stick him over there. Because that's how many days until he comes. Right? Then we can double click that. And then change this. Boom. See? Now we just built us a whole little scene. Without doing a lot. Not doing a lot of work. We just built a little scene. Okay. Now we're going to uh go to the next one here, which is the widget, right? Oh, let me do clocks. One more one more thing to check on the clocks. So inside the clocks, as you can see. We have countdown to date and time. We have the standard issue clock. We have stopwatch. So you go to clock, and then it's counting down. And then, oh, why are you always in big in that, Doc? It's one of those things. If you want to make sure you don't do what I'm doing over here, all you're going to do is bring this down. And once you know you have it in place, lock it. So this little lock right here will keep me from doing that. Then I can lock that myself. And then I won't lock the clock, but I will come in here and lock the tree and lock Santa. Now you can't accidentally move them around. They stay stuck, right? So I got my clock up here, got my little thing in place. You know, everything is all good in the hood, right? And then, uh, yeah, that covers that. Let's get into doing something over here with this widget. So if I come down here and I press on this widget, that's what this little new widget. Now, a widget is like a web page or something that you run that can give you access to a... It's basically information that runs on a website somewhere different from where you're located. In this particular case, I have given myself the Buy Me A Coffee widget, which I can blow up here and then line it up on my screen how I want it. And then this is an interactive widget. Okay, so what that means is if someone were to react with this page, something would happen on my screen to show that that happened. So let me do this real quick. I'm going to go into Chrome. Ah. I'm going to launch the dashboard. I always forget to do this first, so my bad. I'm going to launch the dashboard, and then I'll show you how this works. What's happening, Mr. Sammy, and thank you, Mrs. Anna. Anakil, hi, I'm Anakil, and this is Building Blocks. She's going to kill me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come over here, and then we're going to press this, and then here goes the test. So you'll see what happens but a lot when it works. Wow, that was fast today. So here's something that's cool that just recently happened, which we absolutely love. I can take this um widget here and i can see there's an outline right you might not see it in the demo mode but there's a tiny little outline so i can close this outline and make it smaller so that i can place the items where i want instead of the arbitrary setup that they gave us all right so i just drew outlines around the whole thing so now I can stick this over here where I wish it to be. Now be careful of zooming it too much because it does degrade the quality of the overlay. Actually, let me delete that. Let me just make a whole brand new one. Yeah, it's something weird about how it degrades the quality. So I'm going to put 1280 by 720. And then I'll add it. Okay, I'm going to shrink it just a minute just so I can see where my lines are. 
And then I'm going to do the test again. Let's make it Christmassy. And then send the test. Okay, so now I can crop this because I know where it's going to be. And then embiggen it. So now I can place it exactly where I kind of want it and then send the test again. And then lower it. And they were good. Now we got a dead center. And as you're doing your stuff, if someone was to support you or you had a donation or you're playing a game, there's lots of games, there's scoreboards, there's all type of things you can do with widgets. That's a whole different thing, but just wanted to let you know that you can do it. And so now that is something that we've added to the party. Let's go back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. All right, cool. Let's take a look in here and see what you guys have got to say. All right, so uh, we was here. Kills will come back to that towards the end if you don't mind. Uh, looks like. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. I appreciate that. Thank you, Glenda. Oh, well, why don't you share the link in the chat there, homie? Mm. Yes, Kills is correct. It's been there since um, 80-something. <laughs> Um, yes. I don't know. I, that you got to take up with, uh, anchor and Elgato, but it's probably just updates. Whenever a new thing comes out, it takes a while for the updates and stuff to sort of work its way through and normally it's solved in a couple of weeks or so. But what nobody does is tell the companies that they're having problems with that they're having problems with it. So they don't know. So they never update it. They only update it when the users tell them that they need updates. It's thing. Trust me. I worked at Apple. This is a very common thing. People would always blame us for stuff. And it's like, we have no feedback tickets whatsoever to say this is an issue, but yet the internet is saying it's an issue. You have to send those to support so that they can know and they can make the necessary adjustments. And, uh, there's a million anchor docs. So I don't know which anchor doc you have, but anyway, I would definitely reach out to anchor and Elgato and they will probably send firmware updates normally within a couple of weeks after any new computer that solves all the problems. When, um, yeah, mics don't go in the headphone jacks without the proper uh, adapters. So you have to know your mic. And if it's going to go into a headphone jack, it almost always have to be a TRRS, a.k.a. three lines on the microphone and not two. If your microphone only has two, it's not going to work with that headphone jack because it can't reach the hidden microphone jack that's in the back of the headphone jack. So, yeah. And more than likely, you have the wrong connector on the end of your microphone. Uh, f f please elaborate, and then we can kind of help you out. Specificity counts. Oh, you you have no idea. Uh, PJ, watch the building blocks, and then they will melt your face. Oh, I see. Mr. Camera Junkie already answered that question. <laughs> I don't have any over. I make all these overlays right here. Um, so you got to specify because that's, again, I haven't, you, you guys know how chat works, right? I can't read past what you type. So you got to tell me exactly your whole question, not questions like you ask your spouses. We need specificity, but um, there is no specific overlay. I just drag in an image. The orange thing is just an image and everything else I built with either cameras or screen shares, right? So 
There was no overlay per se. I didn't add anything other than a PNG empty orange file, which created in Canva. You could just download them from the internet. You can make any background if you just to make it so you know exactly there's an orange PNG. But if you, orange is not your color, that's not going to help you. It could be any PNG in the boom clock plant it. It can be any PNG. It doesn't have to be orange. It's orange because I made it orange because that's my steez, if that makes any sense. Right? So the background could be, it doesn't even have to be a PNG. The background could actually be a JPEG. It could be anything. It's just an image. All right, let's keep going. If you're using loop back, you have your monitors set wrong. That's all there is to it. And th okay, so to test this, Miss Acrylic Diva, close Ecamm, close loop back, close everything. Open QuickTime. Does it echo in the standard stuff that's built into the Mac that has nothing to do with any software in your installed? If it works perfectly there, then you have a software setting. Open the next piece. The next piece would be maybe Ecamm. And my guess is if you have this headset and you're using loopback, there's also zoom involved. So you all, you didn't explain the last biggest part. <laughs> so if you're also doing it with zoom involved, then you have to know that you have to turn the monitor off and not hear the monitor. Because more than likely, what you're hearing is slap back and not echo. The difference is slap back is when you say something and it comes back to you. Echo repeats and fades out, right? Slap back is hello, hello. Echo is hello, 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 hello. That's the difference. So if you're hearing slap back, that means you are listening to the output at the same time you're hearing the input. And so you hear it twice. It's a little different. So more than likely, you just need to go in and turn off audio monitor especially if you have our audio monitor on you don't need that so check here under output and turn this off just leave it off never turn it on for most people it's not helpful it's designed for a very specific task and most people who are using it that's not the task so turn this off and then your gravy try that i hope that helps but more than likely, it's either that or in loop back, you have loop back monitoring on, which you don't need. T Biz. Yes, he's here. Okay, one more thing. Whenever you're using Ecamm, your Mac speakers should be off. Period. Don't use them. Um, yeah, there's fights about that, but the dock way this machine never makes a sound <laughs> the you want to have your speakers off listen inside your headphones right so because you're plugging your mic into your headphone jack you're taking out your ability to listen so yeah you got to then turn on echo cancellation and yeah it's a complicated mess It, that that doesn't matter. The, nothing has that. Nothing has changed in lav mics in fifty years. They're all basically the same, so that's not really the problem.
<laughs> I'm just checking on you guys. Uh, okay, which cow digit do you have? Because then maybe we can solve this problem. What you want to do is plug a standard pair, standard pair of headphones into your cow digit, if that works. And then put the microphone into the Mac. Now, now you separated them and they'll be perfectly fine. And yeah. Boom. <laughs> the funniest thing is actually the easiest part of this entire thing. Most people just overcomplicate it. <laughs> okay, good, good. There we go. No, you don't. It is super, super simple. Um, again, just be most people overcomplicate sound, but uh, I, I'll help you. Just, just uh, contact me. Unity say that you can open any application that is open. I want to open a Chrome tab or VLC, but when I went to overlay. All right, let me just um, do this real quick. Screen share overlay right here. Pencil. Chrome. Okay. Done. Duplicate copy of screen share overlay. VLC. VLC is right here on the screen. Whoops. Wrong mouse. VLC is right here on the screen. So you can see there's no magic here. No ma matter of fact, let's make it close. There's no magic at all. Pencil. VLC. I did nothing, no special tricks. Only thing I did was touch the option key with my hand on the keyboard. That is the entire shooting match. That is everything. That is all there is in a bag of chips. Now, let's just suppose in supposition, we wanted to take it one step further and actually play a movie. That works too. So... I don't know what to tell you, boss. <laughs> uh, you probably have a permissions problem where you don't have your machine set to allow screen recording. And if that's the case, no screen share will ever work. If you don't have your, you don't have your Mac set up to allow screen recording. That's just the way the cookie crumbiles. Okay, so yes, take put the headphone put your headphones into the headphone jack of the Cal Digit T three plus.
There we go. Now we're back. That was that was because anyway, what I was saying is um when you do that, that's why. So in theory, basically you're gonna change your output to this, right? And then so your output's gonna come out of that particular device, and then your input, your input is gonna be basically there, and then it's gonna be perfectly fine. So boom. And then just trust me, get get a pair of uh, monitors for your ears and never use airpods anyway ever 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 so yeah i did that when i changed everything like a ding dong see everybody knows everybody has bought these ear monitors they're 20 dollars and they solve your life they're 20 dollars and they solve your life it was like 35, 40 seconds total tops. Come on. Come on. All right. <laughs> All I was saying is that if you plug it, the, the headphone jack, the, the problem is, okay. I'm going to, anyway, the headphone jack, is for listening, but you can use a mic in it, but it has to be TRS. The fact that she says she has an older lavender guarantees it's not a TRS. So yeah, that's not the case. G let's, let's do some focus tension paying real second. Everybody let's focus. Everybody let's write this down. G stop what you're doing. Don't touch nothing. Grab a pencil, grab a piece of paper or grab your iPhone and screenshot what I'm about to show you. I'm going to give you a couple seconds for YouTube to catch up. And I'm going to show you. Okay, let's watch this again. If I hover the mouse over this, it says new camera overlay. So therefore, you're only seeing cameras. If I hover the mouse over this, it says new screen share overlay. And that would allow you to screen share another app on the Mac. So by default, by science, by Ken and Glenn, a camera will show you cameras and the screen share will show you screen shares. That is the difference. I hope that helps. Please write that down. All right, let's go back in. So that covered actually all of that, right? That covered the images. Oh, we didn't do animations. Actually, kind of did animations. You normally press this button right here. And then that brings this up and then you drop in the animation that you want. You select it, of course, and it'll play the animations again. I personally, family, I don't use the buttons. I just drop it in there. But you can see it does do animations. Now, you do have to be careful when you bring in, say, something that is a subsequent movie film. Right. So let's just say, for instance, I drag in this movie. It's going to. Take over. I've got a super dope resource. Okay. But if you wanted to use the movie as an animation, you have to drop it in the window. And it's going to say add as an animated overlay. And then now it's there, but it won't play any sound. You know what I'm saying? The sound's not going to be there. You have to make sure if you're going to use it in that type of situation, it has to be a WebM file, right? A WebM file will allow you to bring it in and keep it where it has a sound. So for instance, if I drop this here, this plays, but you don't hear anything. And that's because I dragged it in as a standard movie. But if I do it as a WebM, then it should make noise, if that makes sense. <laughs> now I'm messing myself up because I can't hear my... Now I can hear myself. <laughs> yeah, man. A lot of mercy. All right. So that covers that. So WebMs will allow you to do an animation that has sound and without it, it's not going to work. What's up, PTV? Good to see you in the building. I am happy that you are here. All right. Let's dive in. Let's check out this. 
Sound effects. I'm going to put sound effects and sound level side by side for just a second because it's going to get loud. All right. So in my sound effects window, I have my songs. Right. I can also play. You know what I mean? I personally don't use these things. But that's all. It okay. So what you can do is click on this cog. This allows you to adjust the volume. So for instance, I want to adjust the volume for just that one sound, not the whole thing. But it doesn't affect this one. This is where your sound volume actually is. But I might want that to play lightly when I'm doing my stream. I'll bring it down here to like 20. Okay, now watch this trick right here. Come over here, add a high key. I'm going to make the high key A. A. All right, so now if I press the A button. Why you not work? Oh, I see. Cause I, you see. All right. Then, uh, let me get rid of that A button for I accidentally mess something up in my stream. I mean, I need that. You also can add it to a scene. So I'm gonna press this, and then now you'll see. Not there. There. Up here in the top, you see where it's added to the scene. So, and get rid of that. Boom. Dun dun dun. Um, that means your talent is ugly. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I did something stupid. Man, where'd it go? Twenty-six and a half inches. The answer to the question. Twenty-six and a half inches. But I can grab it because my arms are thirty-six and a half inches long. So I can I can touch it. Your um, length of camera has zero to do with that because I could put, not that I can in this room, it won't fit, but if I were to turn this way, I can put my camera at the back of the room and pull this same shot with a 70 to 200. So that where the camera is in reference to the face has jack to do with that. It has to do with focal length and depth of field and things like that. So it's kind of a... It's a whole different conversation, but I, I mean, I, I see why people think that because human beings, my family, especially they go, oh, the camera's too close. I'm like, what focal lens do I have? And they go, what? And I go, shut up. Let me take the picture. Cause they don't understand that when I have a 50 millimeter, I got to be at one position, which is different from using the 16 millimeter. I got to be a different position. So it's why. A lot of wedding photographers and people tend to use the 24 to 70 so that way they can stand far back and not freak people out because they came to them at the 24 millimeter distance to take the pictures. People think the camera's too close, especially when they see a lens that long. It freaks people out. So, yeah, I don't know why people always think, oh, the camera's so close. I'm like, shut up. I'm the photographer. Back up. You just got to tell them to shut up. <laughs> uh, good luck. That's awesome. <laughs> Rich, you're so funny. Uh, well, yeah, I stream in 4K at full ugliness. Just tell them whatever. <laughs> so you're correct. Kios. Yes, yes, yes. It's kind of funny. Also, 
believe it or not, if you really wanted to, not that I do, because I think it's horrible. However, uh, A, makeup solves that, but B, you got skin softening in your in in your Sony. Because you said 6400, so I know you have a Sony. I personally don't use it, but you can do skin softening. And then the Sony will take care of that. I don't use that mess. I'm just cute. <laughs> anyway, so that covers the sound effects window. Basically, again, you guys know me. If you need to put in new sounds, just drag and drop. It makes your life so much easier. Why did I try to move that to the wrong place? Let me go desktop here. Move it in there. All right. It's clean. Replace. Mush up your face. All right. The next one over here, of course, is sound levels. I'm going to bring this in window for a second so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Definitely try the skin softening thing. It might it might change your life. All right. See, I just messed myself up. Not yet, not yet, um, Paul. I'm gonna do that next. Let me finish this up here. I'm gonna click this. Uh, see, now Cheetah messed me up. Got me pressing camera overlay. I want to press this, and then I want to press this, and then I want to press Ecamm Live. Ecamm Live, and I want to go sound levels. Booyaka. Okay, here we go. Now we in here. The reason why I wanted to show you guys this because if I were to do something like uh. Let's think here. Let's say I wanted to put my iPhone on the screen, right? So as you can see with Ecamm, my iPhone's plugged in. I press this, iPhone shows up on the screen, right? But say I wanted to make some noise came out of the iPhone, right? Um, definitely do not open the Carrot app. <laughs> that, would, that would be bad. Uh I better not do that live, just in case it starts saying something stupid. I'm going to do something to you. Let me go to music, see if I have any epidemic sounds in my iTunes library, which I might. You definitely don't want me to play this song live. Here, let's see. ES, your library. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so if I'm here... And I'm playing this. I can have it so that the sound actually comes through my Apollo. Um, Apple Music may not allow that just because of their rules. But down here in the bottom, I have it set up so that should play through. Right? As a matter of fact, we were doing this the other day because I was playing Epidemic Sound and I was having it rock through the rock through the dock connector. Yeah, right now, it, Apple Music won't allow it, but other music apps should allow that. So I won't do that. And I definitely won't turn on any uh, Philips lights in my house. But I just want to show you that you can have music play through your phone if you're using your phone as a connector. If I'm using it as a microphone, even like if I'm using it as a camera, I can make it so that the sound comes through whenever it's being the camera on here as well. Um, that's just, you know. A neat little setup just to know that you can use your iPhone. As you see here, I also have my overhead, which is my Rodecaster Pro. So I have my overhead set up there. Now, if I were to bring in a movie, let's grab a movie. Actually, I could do it from here. If I were to come here and play a movie file. The new Ecamm version 3.9 is here, and it is a game changer. This is a game changer. I bet that woke you up, didn't it? This is a game changer. It's a game changer. So you can adjust the volume for the movie by sliding this little guy back and forth. Um, or you can just turn it down so that when you play a movie, no sound comes out. But notice that when I did the movie, it automatically mutes, right? It'll, I'll play it again, but let me turn it down so I don't freak you guys out. It'll automatically mute my microphone. The new Ecamm version 3.9. And that's on purpose, right? That's done on purpose so that this way you're not talking over the movie by accident. This 
if you're in interview mode, it would allow you to talk to your guests during that time frame as well. So that's an important thing to know. All right. All right, let me get rid of this. Now I'll go to what Paul was saying. Because that kind of covers that real quick. Let me do what Paul was saying. So in my comments and reaction window, I basically put Q colon. That helps me search for questions. And then that lets me find when there's a question. Um, for reference, questions in with a question mark. That's not a question. That's not a question. That's I get it now. I see what Paul is saying. <laughs> They're not. Yeah, that's the reason why, like, you put the cue when you're asking for questions because it helps me find questions. But when I do this and there's just a bunch of statements, then that kind of throws off me, but I'm quick and I'm fast. So I can normally figure it out. But for most people that might be a little bit of a stretch. So etiquette for streaming is Q colon. When you have a question, not when you're just making a statement because it does make it easier for the person to answer the questions. The other secret is I have these favorites where I need to come back to this. So I got it. Bang, bang. Ooh, stupid. <laughs> no, I just killed it. So now what I have to do is type FH and then go find whatever Keely said that I started and then I accidentally deleted. So now I can put it back. Bye y'all. So know that you can use your search box in order to get through. So I can do a six, 400 because that was a question. I mean, that came up, right? I can do camera if I know how to spell. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, cam works. Basically that's the situation. So that does make it simpler uh, to move around. It helps you. There are zero defaults to camera overlays. There is none. There's nothing default about it. You come in here, your cameras are here. They're just what's in your list. There's no such thing as a default. Hey, Aiden. Wait, why do you say hey, Aiden? Is Aiden here? Oh, hey, Aiden. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Don't kill me, Luis. Yuck, yuck, yuck. All right, gang, let's go back. I hit the other windows. Let me put them back on. Boom. Camera effects window. Let's cover this real quick. As you guys know, we got brightnesses. We got temperatures. Uh, we got tints. We got saturations. And we got gamma. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. There is a support article on the website that it tells you exactly what to do about that. That's my blue screen, green screen, blue screen, green screen. I don't use that, but it's there. You just fade levels here and there to make it work. And you can do weird transparencies if you get it to work. Blue kind of works because I have a... Because I have a purple... So the blue is working there. That's why I was trying to speak English. Then, of course, you got zoom and pan. Zoom. Pan. Zoom. You can move around when you're in zoom and pan. So you can do something cool like this. So I could take this scene. Then I can come down here and duplicate it. Then I could turn off the zoom and pan. So now what happens is I can what? Really, though? Yes. I have something very important to say. Listen closely. Everything today is free. No, it's not. It's a joke. You see, so that works. Boom. <laughs> My camera is 98 years old. Ah, that's funny. Um, Paul, I don't think we scheduled uh affiliate thing today. Hold on. Let me double check the calendar. I think we're doing it every other week, but let me just double check. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, for the life of me. It came live demo. Check this chat. I checked the run. Yep, the next one is 11 12. 
thank goodness. Me not like do too today. Me tired of that. That's funny, Rich. <laughs> so um, you can reset all of these. Of course, we got the ability to mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall. You can do black and whites. You can rotate your face upside down, turn it around, right? And then you can set this as the default camera because it is. Um, yeah, so the reason why you might only be seeing this camera in camera effects because that's the camera that I'm using. If I switch it to this camera, it switches to that camera, right? So then I can decide whether I'm fixing one or fixing two. So select the other camera and then you can pick in between and just embiggen it. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. It even tells you the resolution, right? Uh, because that one's connected by the, no, it's not. That's weird. I have to adjust that anyway. Um, it tells you your camera resolution, like what you're bringing in, like the whole nine yards, it's all there. So if you're not seeing the right camera effects, switch another camera and watch it change. Or just put that camera on the screen because why would you adjust the camera effects without seeing the camera? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And then we got that. Mm. Yes, yes, every other week, Rich. Yes, Paul is confusing me because I don't know why. Hey, that's my iPhone. <laughs> okay, there it is. So that's cameras in a nutshell. Uh, interview window. That's common, stupid. The interview window is right here. That does that. And then, of course, there's our preference window. So if you are in here and these are bothering you, just press Command tilde and they go night night. And then we're back out. Uh, yeah. Right. Yes. Rich. Rich brings up something good, uh, gang. So what Rich is saying, right, is if I make a change to this camera, it doesn't affect this one or it doesn't affect that one. It doesn't affect this one. So in other words, if I was to do something over here with this brightness, right, let's just make the brightness really, really crazy. When I go to the next one, it's there on that, but it might not stick in other cases. So what you want to do is if you make changes to something that works throughout everything there is this button down here apply it to all scenes only press that when you want to make sure that the camera effects touches all the scenes that you've already set up if you don't do that fine you'll have to do them one at a time but it helps if you're doing something crazy so it's good idea rich very important thank you for pointing it out because i don't use that so i forget about it forget about it okay uh that kind of covers the whole thing um let me go back to see what mr g is doing g i'm super co confused because we had this conversation last week and i remember telling you we purposely 86 the majority of what is ndi first of all wait why you do that See, I hate when it does that. <laughs> when you hit camera, it pulls up an NDI camera. I'm looking at camera options and set to a fault and apply to all scenes. All right. Um, yeah, I'll help you fix this. You are. Because what you want to do is maybe go up into the camera resource for right now and include in switcher, take out all the other cameras. Right? So now, matter of fact, I'm going to just take everything else out. Because this only takes like two seconds. Okay, now... You don't have a camera switcher anymore because the only camera that it can possibly see is the one you're trying to affect. Make your changes and then go back and turn on the other stuff as needed. And then you're, you're gravy again. 
Maybe you can do that. Maybe that's a fix to wait. Ooh, don't do that. Dang it. Now my cameras are coming back because I'm turning them back on. So if you one of those people that stream with more candles than candles, <laughs> if you stream with more cameras than you can handle, just try to turn them off temporarily and then go make your adjustments and then turn them back. And then that would help. The other thing, don't use all them cameras if you don't need them. Like most people put way too much cameras trying to be cute and they can't stream with one camera. So, so get, get efficient with one camera before you add extras, unless it's an absolute necessary and then you add them, but it's better to get proficient with one and don't try to produce the Grammy on your first, you know, 50 streams. I'm 400 streams deep and you guys mostly see me on one camera. I barely use my others. I have one here. I have my overhead right here, which I don't even have plugged in right now because I didn't feel like climbing behind the desk to plug it back up. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it's better to get proficient at simplicity and then add the rest. And I'm curious to, if you could help me, why are you using NDI? You don't need to anymore. So I'm curious. Uh, I don't know if this is demonstrable. Can you lead us through the phenomenon known as two computers on the same network. Um, yeah, I could, <laughs> but my iMac is in my backpack. I mean, my Mac mini is in my backpack. Sorry, Kiels. Um, I will set it up tomorrow. Sorry, Kiels. I just realized that it's not plugged in. But if both computers are on the same network and you have NDI out turned on, because it's built into Ecamm now, right? We use the full complement. So that's what I mean when I say, see, now you were just going to confuse everything I told our because, but anyway, you don't have to run the NDI program anymore. It doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, you've probably seen me where I, I'll pull up the computer for my neighbor down the hall. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've probably seen me do that before um, because we're on the same network, right? And their computer's all the way down there. Whole separate cameras, whole nine yards, but I can pull their computer up when they're when they're in the office because we're using the same network. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you that in class or I'll pop up real quick inside the LGL to show you because it's relatively simple. But, yeah, that's it. Anyway, gang. That is the demonstration for today. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to slide in any last minute questions. Thank you, video for bosses. <laughs> I am using the Shure SM7B industry standard for all things broadcast, radio, TV, podcast, all of the above. You don't need in, uh, see, I knew we were going to say this conversation. Okay, Albert, listen, you do not need NDI the program anymore. Okay. Use Ecamm to pull in scenes from multiple applications. Right. If you have NDI, the programs running on your computer, close them. Just close them. And then use Ecamm to pull in those things. Yes, that is a game changer. <laughs> thank you, Twisted Finger Paul. Thank you, thank you. And gang, that's it. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Kills, uh, ping me if you're going to be around. I'll set it up inside the LGO group real quick just to show you because it's super simple. I just got to, I got to, I, I, <laughs> I got to dig it out of my backpack. Anyway, gang, pasta lasagna. Let me find the music. Thank <laughs> you.